All right, today we're going to go ahead and go over how to rebuild our um, Aspire Atlantis. I'm not going to bother telling you what kind of box I have or anything like that because you could fuck care less. So let me just get down to it. Let's take it apart. Most of you should already be familiar with this because you already know how to change your coils. Same tools as normal that we usually use. Of course, we're going to use our scissors to trim our cotton using 24 gauge wire. Handy dandy little paper clip. I'm going to show you what this is used for here in a second. As you can see, I've taken the end and I've twisted it so that I can pull out the screen on top of the coil. We have our screwdriver. I'm going to use this, tap down the screen back in our 5 32nd drill bit that I'm going to use to wrap it on our other screwdriver not necessary but I just use it to pull off the bottom part of course our pliers our nail clippers to cut our wire and our ohm reader just to make sure that we're not doing anything stupid so let's take out the coil put this over here so I don't lose it Alright, so first thing we're going to do, I'm going to take this screen out right here. I'm going to use that handy dandy little paper clip that I bent the tip in. I'm just going to work it underneath. And we're going to pull it out nice and easy, nice and gentle. Done. Keep it as flat as possible. Don't want to bending it. Okay. I use the 532nd drill bit. If you're not sure which size they are, you just get one and you keep trial and error until you find one that fits inside the coil and it's nice and snug and doesn't really wiggle. See, this one doesn't wiggle. It's nice and snug in there. Nice some of the juice off of it. As you can see by the dark color, this one has been used and abused. I'm going to take my screwdriver. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take up this bottom cap. For those of you who are already familiar with taking the, um, with redoing the Pro Tank coils back in the day, this won't be anything new to you. Put it in there. Just kind of wiggle it out. Nice and easy. Bam. Just like that. Insulators, same thing, same thing as the Pro Tanks. Grab my tweezers and I'm going to pull it out. As you can see, that one wire, just like the Pro Tanks were, one is on, one is on the inside of the insulator, and the other is on the outside of the insulator. So you notice that one is on at the 12 o'clock position, one's at the 6 o'clock position. So that when you're wrapping it, just keep that in mind when you pull your leads down. I'm going to go ahead and pull this insulator out. See, I'm going to use my pliers. Just like that. Now, I've rebuilt this coil probably four times already. You can see it is used, but it's not even close to being worn through. If it starts to wear through, you're just going to have to cough up the extra money and buy a new one. Now with those two leads exposed, I'm going to pull the coil from the bottom instead of through the top. If I pull it through the top, this film right here will come out with it if I pull it out through the top. So that's why I pull it out through the bottom. It's going to look like a mess when you pull it out. No worries because you're not going to be reusing this coil anyway. And that's how nasty it was inside. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way. And as you see, you will have some residual 
um, cotton in there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use our small little screwdriver and I'm going to push it out again through the bottom. I'm going to make sure I get everything out of there so it's nice and clean. Ta-da! All done. Double check it really good. Make sure I don't have anything else left in there. Nice and clean. Now, as you can see, what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for make sure that the only thing that is in there is that film that covers these fill holes and that the rest of the tube is smooth so that I don't miss anything. All right, let's move on to the next step. Next step, I'm going to take my drill bit here and we're going to wrap the coil. Same as before, you should be used to this. Anybody who rebuilds coils knows. We're going to do nine wraps. I'm going to leave enough for the bottom because it has a lead. And I have plenty of wire here. So that I don't have to worry about. I'll have plenty of excess so I can clip it off. Well, let's do this. Six, seven, eight, nine. All right, now that we have our nine wraps, what we're gonna do is we don't want them really close. We don't want them very close, but we do want them even. So I am gonna take a few minutes here and I'm gonna space these out and make them look nice and even. Okay, so we have the coils tidied up here or the coil titled tidied up. You know, any of you who have built coils before in the past, you know it's pretty important. You just want to make sure nobody's touching, they're about evenly spaced. Now the other important thing you're going to want to know is, again, what I was saying about the 12 o'clock and the 6 o'clock position, is that you're going to want to make sure that one of these is pointed down in the 12 o'clock position, I mean down in the 6 o'clock position, and the other is up in the 12 o'clock position. So one on the top and one on the bottom. Now what I used to do this with, I'm going to have to fold this lead down to be in the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my flathead screwdriver next to the one on the top. And then I'm going to fold it over that flat tip down. That'll create a nice little bend there for me. This is essentially what your coil is going to look like when it's completed. I'm just going to bend this to a little bit more of a 90 degree angle so that it's pointing straight down. For this I use my tweezers because I don't want to manhandle it too much. So make sure that it's pointed straight down. And voila, we have our coil. About as even as I'm going to get it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to wrap it. And that will be our next step. Okay, for the next step, we're going to start the wicket. What I've done is I've taken a piece of cotton, I've flattened it out as much as possible without making it really tight. Again, those of you who are into rebuildables know that if the cotton is too tight, it won't wick properly. So you want it a little bit loose, but you want it snug. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our coil. I'm going to put the first piece underneath this leg. Now also, 
Again, as you notice, one on one side, one on the opposite side. Now what I'll actually do, just to make it a little bit easier for me to handle, is I will drip a little bit of juice on it so that it makes it acts a little bit like an adhesive here a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Just wrap this around nice and easy. Now as you see some of the juice is starting to seep through, that's good, it holds it in place. And then I'll roll it between my fingers a little bit. Because I want to make sure that it's nice and snug and tight on there without squishing it. This will do it, it'll keep it from fraying too much so that when you slide it back down into the coil head, you won't have any real issues with it. And that's basically what we're looking at. Anything that might have stuck through, I use the drill bit just to make sure that the inside is still clean. Because we want our airflow as open as possible. All right, and the next step is we're going to go ahead and put this back into the coil head. Nice and easy. Just like a pro tank. Both leads go down through the bottom. Now this is going to look a little awkward when you first put it in, but if you nice and twist it nice and easy, you'll be able to pull it through without any issues. If it's a little too tight, you can always, again, roll it on your fingers and fix it. Alright, one of the other things you're going to see here is that when you're using this, once you get it right about down to there, where it's just a little bit almost even with that lip right here, with this lip, even with the top, I'm going to pack down just a little bit over. That's about where the coil will naturally rest at the top. So you know how far to put it down in there. Another thing I probably should have mentioned before I put the coil in is when you're putting the coil in, you want to make sure that that 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock isn't in these grooves. Because you want them to be able to sit right here on this. Alright, so now what we're going to do is, same as with the Pro Tank, one goes on the inside, one goes on the outside. So I'm going to put that leg that we bent from the top on the outside. And we put the insulator back in. This is where I also cheat. And use my paper clip. One on the inside, one on the outside. Bend it down. Nice and easy. I'm going to clip that off in a second. Bend the other one down. 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Take our cap.
Just need a little bit more leverage to slide this baby in there. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to put the screen back on. And I'm going to go ahead and clip these leads here while I'm here. As close as possible. Now this is actually all the easy part. The hardest part is the trial and error of making sure to see if you had too much wick in there or not enough. Because if you start getting dry hits or leaks or anything like that, then you know you have to adjust how you wick. So let's go ahead and screw this in here. Let's see what resistance we get. Right at about 0 0.5, 0 0.48. Now next step is to just put it on. We'll see how it fires. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We're going to put our screen in. Then we're going to put it in and see how it fires. Again, my handy dandy little paper clip or flathead screwdriver, whichever you choose to use. Just going to push that down into that groove. I manhandle it as little as possible. All right, and we are good to go. Again, last thing I do is I just take my drill bit, I slide it down through the hole and make sure that I don't have anything in there. And that the hole is clean. Right. Let me dry my fingers off here from where I was wrapping that wick. Right. So our next thing is we're gonna go ahead and put it on our mod. Let's see what is firing up at here. 29 watts, 3.7 volts. We should be good to go. There we go. It's already primed. Put a little juice in here. Let's put our tank on. sure our juice holes are exposed and let's see how she does very good very good all right if you have any questions um, post them in the comments or if you know me on Facebook send me some messages all right have a good one